Good morning. It is Friday, February 19th. In our devotion for today, I'm going to talk a little bit about Lent and our Lenten devotion. Lent has begun. Uh, We had Ash Wednesday a few days ago. It was great to be able to connect with you. Uh, Many of you drove up uh, to our door to receive the ashes. Uh, We had a wonderful Ash Wednesday service, despite the technical difficulties and the sound problems. So Lent has begun. And I'm going to continue to remind us over and over again, Lent is all about preparing ourselves for Easter. The more we put into Lent, the more powerful and life-changing Easter is. As we go through Lent, we always keep one eye on Easter because that's our goal. That's what's waiting around the corner for us. That's what we are anticipating, even as we repent and do self-examination and build uh, connections um, between us and God. For Lent, as a church, we have a what we call a Lenten devotional. It's called A Story to Tell. This is a devotion that we're reading uh, as a church. Um, There is uh, something for every single day uh, throughout Lent. Remember, Lent is 40 days, not counting Sundays. And this is a great handy kind of tool to uh, begin the day with or to end the day with. uh, Because what it does is it helps us uh, to refocus, to readjust uh, where we're looking and how we are living. Uh, It gives us wonderful thoughts and some prayers and some ideas. And we read a scripture. uh, And we're all doing this together, hopefully, each and every day throughout Lent. And like I said, you can do this at the beginning of the day to start your day off well, or you can do it at the end of the day uh, in order to decompress and to recover from some of the things that might have happened during the day. Or you can do it in the middle of the day as well as a a check-in, a reconnect with God uh, halfway through the day or whatever. The important thing is that this is a great resource uh, for us to use uh, on our Lenten journeys. And so in order to help us out, I'm going to read the devotion for Uh, Friday, uh, February 19th, from A Story to Tell. Again, we were handing these out on Ash Wednesday. If you haven't picked one up, just come by the church and we'll give you one. Uh, Pick it up on Sunday or whenever. Um, This is a a great tool for all of us to have and to use together. The devotion for February 19th. uh, The reading is from Mark chapter 1, verses 9 to 11. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. To ponder. Baptism is a renunciation of all those competing voices that try and tell you who you are. The world gives you names like screw-up, fake, fat. But in baptism, you're named Beloved. Rachel Held Evans from Name of the Beloved. Call me beloved. Think about Jesus, born in a barn in first century Palestine to a woman who became pregnant before she was married. The name illegitimate could have been ordered, uh, could have ordered his existence, every day challenging his legitimacy. King Herod ordered the killing of young children in and around Bethlehem as he attempted to get rid of the child sought by the Magi. The name Troublemaker could have followed Jesus, every day living with his head down to never challenge the status quo. Angels sang at Jesus' birth. A star appeared in the sky. Wise men came bearing expensive gifts. Random people at the temple praised him. He could have spent his life marked by the name Extraordinary every day expecting to be the center of the universe. These names could have shaped Jesus' life, but they all fell away when God named him Beloved. We too receive this name in baptism, and under it we can move free with nothing to prove every day. The fact that God calls us his loved one, uh, his beloved, God's beloved, It is an empowering thing because it is a voice that speaks into our lives that denounces all of those ugly names and ugly labels that the world gives us. Too often we are living enslaved or under the weight or the burden or the curse of all these labels that have been thrust upon us. They've shaped a distorted identity for us. And baptism, what it does, is it helps us to stand secure at the center of who we are, that we are God's children. We are beloved no matter what happens, no matter what we do. We are always loved by God. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Beloved Jesus, thank you for giving me your name, for pouring it out over me freely and for all time. 
Amen. Amen. This uh, Sunday, we have worship uh, at 10 a.m. It's going to be live on YouTube with the link on Facebook. So please join us for worship this Sunday. Then in March, we are going to begin our uh, regular worship schedule, 8 and 10 o'clock, inviting people back to worship. We're still going to be using the same safety protocols. Masks will be required. You'll have to sit spread out from each one another. Uh, but we're going to be going and taking steps towards getting back to regular worship starting in March. So I want to invite you to be a part of that uh, as well. Also, this Wednesday, we have our Lenten Soup Supper. It's going to be a virtual event. It's BYOS, Bring Your Own Soup. But you're going to be uh, joining us from the intimacy of your own home as you eat your own soup uh, and connect with us via Zoom. Uh, look toward uh, your email. Um, we'll be sending out or contact us uh, and we'll let you know what that link is. It'll be the same link every week throughout Lent. In the meantime, take care of yourselves and look in on those who are most vulnerable. Amen.